Hey y'all, it's Amy from harryshomesteadblog.com and today I'm going to teach you how I make our favorite fermented food which is sauerkraut. Now we eat this almost daily in our home. This is a batch we've been eating on in the fridge right now and I'm going to go ahead and get a new batch started today so we have a fresh one ready to go when we finish this jar. So sauerkraut is simply made from cabbage and salt. It's the easiest fermented food to make in my opinion. You don't have to add any salt water brine like we typically do. I don't have to heat up an, a pot on the oven. I'm just gonna cut up my cabbage, massage it with the salt, and put it in the jar. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these outer leaves just because we don't know exactly where these have been. And I'm also gonna use them later to help hold down my cabbage along with my fermenting weight. I have three heads of cabbage today. I've already removed some of the leaves on this cabbage. So three heads of cabbage, they're about medium sized, is going to make about a half gallon mason jar of sauerkraut, which is what I had here. So I've been eating sauerkraut for a while now, probably almost five years, but I had been buying it at the store. And the size jar you get was only about a two cup jar, and it was about eight or nine dollars. Whereas each of these heads of cabbage, I think I paid a dollar for each, maybe a dollar fifty. So I'm gonna get this huge jar of, of sauerkraut for about six dollars versus a third of this that I buy at the store. It's a way more cost efficient way to eat sauerkraut and it's so, so simple. I'm gonna go ahead and core the cabbage and get it into smaller size pieces so that it will fit in my food processor. So I had begun making the sauerkraut after I had been paying quite a bit for a liquid probiotic for my son. It hadn't even crossed my mind when doctors suggested that he needed to take a probiotic that I could just make his probiotics at home. So for the last three or four months, my son has been eating whole food probiotics with us. We do all these gut healthy foods to help strengthen our immune system, keep our gut strong, aid in digestion, even helps you sleep better. So we benefit from this as well as our 10 month old son. So we have some form of fermented food at every meal. Sauerkraut is probably the most common one. We put it on everything. Salad, pizza, burgers, meatloaf, put it on tacos, mix it in eggs. It's just a great side for any dish and it's so easy. Once you make a big batch, you have it on hand, just pull it out of the fridge and add it to your meal. Cabbage comes out of the ground beaming with good bacteria that we want to allow to spread throughout our ferment during the fermentation process. So our goal here today is to create a brine, which this cabbage will create its own brine, and we're going to submerge the cabbage under that brine, allowing all of that good bacteria that's already present on these cabbage leaves to spread throughout our brine and inhibit the bad bacteria from growing. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and begin adding this to my food processor. As I do that and as I get a batch out, I'm going to use the largest pot I have, which is my stock pot. I've also used my instant pot liner. You just want a really large pot so that it can hold all your cabbage when you go to massage the salt with your cabbage. I have all of my cabbage ready and I'm now going to create the brine. I'm going to let the cabbage create its own brine. So the way I do that is two and a half tablespoons of salt. That was for three heads of cabbage for about a half gallon. Two and a half tablespoons. And here's where this gets a little messy. I'm just going to take my hands and begin massaging the salt into the cabbage. And within a few minutes, you'll start to feel the cabbage get very juicy. It's gonna start releasing its own moisture, which is what's gonna create the brine. So while I'm working on this, 
I'll tell you a little bit about the fermenting time. Cabbage is one of the vegetables that you can ferment almost like forever. I've heard of people fermenting cabbage on their counter for up to three months. We typically prefer about a week. Some people only prefer three or four days. So like I always say, when you ferment a vegetable, it's completely up to your taste preference for how long you let the vegetable ferment. Also, the temperature in your home and the season of the year. It is the middle of summer, so it is warmer in our home, so things will ferment a little faster. Once you can kind of squeeze out the brine when you hold it up, it's about ready. So I'm going to hold over, because this does get messy, I already have a huge mess on my counter now and my floor. So I'm just gonna start stuffing this into the jar, kind of holding over the stock pot so that it, when it falls back, it's at least falling back in the pot and not all over my floor or my countertops. Kind of press that in. As you press it, you're gonna have more brine come up. A sauerkraut requires no saltwater brine. The cabbage will create its own brine. So all I used was cabbage and salt. You can see as I press down, there's that brine coming up. I said that sauerkraut was the easiest vegetable to ferment, but it's really probably the messiest. So you can see when I press down that brine coming up over my cabbage, that's what we want to happen. So we do want this jar to be pretty tightly packed. And then I'm gonna add my fermenting weight on top. I'm gonna add some cabbage leaves as well as my fermenting weight. It's gonna hold this cabbage down under its brine for the week or so that I ferment it on the counter. If you've seen any of my other fermenting videos, you've heard me talk about the bag of rocks. If you do not have a fermenting weight, you can simply use a Ziploc bag with a couple of rocks placed inside and that will actually hold down your cabbage. So I have a huge mess on my counter, but I have a nice jar of cabbage ready to ferment into sauerkraut. So I wanna go ahead and point out this jar that we've been eating on has that dull yellow color, and whereas this is that bright green color still from the cabbage. So you'll notice over the next few days as this ferments, it will start to return to that dull color, and you'll know the fermenting process is working. You don't want any of these pieces of cabbage to be out of the brine. So I'm gonna wipe off any excess so that as it ferments, those pieces don't mold. If that happens, your sauerkraut is not ruined. You can simply pull those pieces away. All that happened is oxygen was able to hit those pieces of cabbage, which caused them to mold. So anything below this brine is not gonna mold because there's no oxygen that can hit it. Add a couple of cabbage leaves to help hold down those, that cabbage under the brine. Now, you can add as many as you need. If you did not have a full jar, I don't think I'm gonna be able to fit two. Like if for some reason your cabbage only filled you up to here, you could just fill the rest of this with cabbage leaves and then add your weight on top. You just wanna get the jar as full as possible so that all of that cabbage stays under your brine, keeping any mold or bacteria from continuing to grow, letting the good bacteria spread. I'm gonna to top it with a very loose lid. You can use a fermenting lid or a tea towel with a rubber band. I just typically use a mason jar lid and screw it on very loosely to allow any gases to escape. I'm gonna wipe down this casserole dish and leave it out on my countertop for about five to seven days. So we love sauerkraut. It's the universal side dish in our home. We eat it on everything, almost every meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So I hope if you haven't already tried sauerkraut, maybe go buy some at the store and just see if you like it before you make your own. It is more expensive at the store, but at least you can see if you actually like the taste of sauerkraut before you make a batch yourself. So I think once you make it and acquire that taste, you are gonna love it and it's gonna be such an easy side dish that's so gut healthy and beneficial for your health. I have a link in the description box below to a free ebook that I would love for you to check out if you're interested in beginning your fermenting journey. It includes this sauerkraut recipe as well as several other of our favorite recipes that we ferment in our home almost weekly. If you haven't ever fermented a food, that's a great place to start, so check that out below. So if you like this video on how to make sauerkraut, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you back each week where I post two new videos on our homegrown lifestyle at our wholesome homestead. Thank y'all so much for stopping by.